the home's mind. Moving made simple. The Breakfast Show is brought to you by Cousins. Famous brand names on furniture, carpets and beds. Good morning, it's as good as 20 past 7 still to come after 7.30. All the latest traffic, travel, news and weather, plus Salford City Reds coach Steve Sims joins Mike and I for a chat in sport. Then at 7.45, Michelle and I will get comfy on the sofa for a bit of soap gossip. But first, in the current financial climate, local businesses are dropping like flies. Here with some ideas for making your company more profitable is business expert and author Peter Brook. A very good morning to you. Morning, Nikki. Uh, Turn Your Sales Force Into Profit Heroes is your book. Um, so let, let's just talk at the moment uh, about a quick synopsis of, uh, of this piece of literature. The, the simple part of it, Brian, is that it's about building sales team capability, a practical guide to building sales team and capability. It's not, um, business is not the mystique of the apprentice, it's actually about doing practical things that you can do on a day-to-day -day basis. And at the heart of it lies I don't believe you need a world where you bring consultants in to drive the capability of your people. It's about giving your team the confidence and skills to train themselves and to coach themselves to win more business. And it's as simple as that. And it's, uh, it's founded on many years of working with lots of big companies um, to find out what works and also what doesn't work. A motivational piece of writing such as this one, I would imagine, is even more um, current in today's climate with sales forces feeling demotivated there isn't the money out there perhaps to sell their goods so what would be your top tip first and foremost for anybody who has got a sales force who are feeling particularly flat at the moment i think there's, there's two parts of it nikki i think the first part is what does the person who runs the business need to do and the second is what does the person in the business need to do um, the most important thing in running a business today, we've seen 4.8% of businesses in Greater Manchester have gone out of business in the last year, which mm. is which is disastrous. Um, you've got to manage your cash, and it's as simple as that. We know um, we all have don't have access to the expense budgets that others have that we read about in the news and hear about every day at the moment. But what is important is managing your cash. So it's about managing the creditors' days, and as a person within the team, it's having the responsibility to realise that every penny counts to every part of the business. So mm -hmm. whether it's the simple part of managing not using the photocopy as much or whether it's about getting your people to pay more quickly mm -hmm. um, it's critical to manage your, manage the cash and manage the variable cost of the business that's absolutely crucial well point two I'm picking up on what Nikki mentioned earlier about demotivated how do yeah. you inspire your workforce how do you bolster the morale I think the biggest one of the biggest risks is um, not maintaining staff morale and motivation is, is at the end of the day Brian it's not not talking to people not communicating to them hiding your head in the sand and as a business leader if you're not out there telling people what they should be doing or telling them about the business expressing concerns about the future saying what's good about the business you can't expect your, your team to be motivated and the same as if you're in the team um, if you never mind if you're a red or a blue Rio Ferdinand or Richard Dunn have got a job to do on the park and that's about motivating the team and the same as if you're in the workforce you you need to be out there motivating the people um, and believing in what you've got and if you don't believe in it if you we all choose our attitude every day if you choose an attitude that's poor what you're going to get I can almost envisage these motivational posters that you sometimes oh, dear, see. Oh, yeah, I know. There's no I know. I <laughs> <laughs> um, Can anybody then become a good salesperson, or do you think it's something that's in your genes? Um, I think anyone can do anything whenever they want to do it, Nikki. I think that's the secret to life. I think if you've got the desire, passion, and commitment to do something, you can do it. Um, we've seen people fail on The Apprentice. Um, a lot and they fail because they're not part of a team they're out for themselves they're not trying to boost the performance of the organization they want to step into the limelight it's about selling what you sell um, it's about building fantastic relationships with your customers and it's a building fan um, fantastic trust with the people who you work with well, just picking up on um, what you just said about the customers, and I want to probe you further, Nicky and I do, uh, about The Apprentice, yeah. as it was on last night. But before we do, a couple more points. Um, you've got here, delight your customers, and you, just, you were talking yeah. about customers. How do, you, how do you bring them in where, at the moment, people are feeling particularly jaded? Yeah. I think you have to firstly turn to um, look at what someone, a big business leader, someone like Sam Walton in the States says, uh, says there's only one boss and that's the customer and they've mm. got the power to fire every single person in the organisation from the chairman on down simply by taking their business somewhere else. Um, at times like we're in today and times like any time, um, you have to delight your customers, you have to give them more than you give them. In our business we, we, um, we run a field marketing business as well as a consulting business, if we're not out there 
going the extra step to deliver to our customers more than what they'd expect from within a contract. Um, don't expect them to look somewhere else for a cheaper price. Okay, now we've mentioned The Apprentice a few times. It's a good <laughs> reference point because it's a sales force that we can all see on our screens. Yeah. Um, is there anybody at the moment that's standing out for you as a good salesperson, an example of perhaps what people should aspire to? Oh dear. Um, <laughs> what, no. I, I was, well, that, that's, that's not fair. I think, um, I think the, what The Apprentice does do is it puts business into the limelight and I think the more that that happens, the better. There are thousands and thousands of people employed in this country in roles that involve selling. Um, they're involved in every day trying to go out and find new business. What The Apprentice does for me is it puts business at the heart. Uh, you, could, you could compare it to a soap opera at times. I think um, we know who went out yesterday. I don't know if anyone's read the papers this morning, if they recorded it. I don't know if we'll... Poor we'll old Mona. Go. Poor old Mona. Um, that sums it up, doesn't it, really? <laughs> well, <laughs> but, uh, clue is in there. I to ask you, I mean, I've mentioned this on The Breakfast Show a couple of times because we've spoken about uh, mm. The Apprentice and, uh, at length at times um, because you work in the industry and I've always thought that people who are doing their business courses have got their MBEs maybe watching this and cringing at the fact that their industry has been promoted or shown off in such a kind of... Uh, I was going to say, almost a clown-like fashion by some of these jokers who basically would, aren't fit to tie their own shoelaces. A bit harsh. It is a bit, but come <laughs> on. Some of them, I mean, some of them, I feel like they've only just been employed on the programme because they make good telly and not actually because of their business acumen. I think that's fair. I think there's, there's, there's an element of truth in that. But for me, The Apprentice is superb insofar that it puts business at the front of mind at primetime television. Today, the problems that we face in business are huge. They're getting big, uh, um, bigger. Let's, let's get a grip on reality. 280 odd thousand people have been made redundant mm -hmm. quite recently. We've heard from BT this morning announcing that another 10,000 global job losses. Um, it's tough out there. Business is at the forefront of people. We're talking about people's livelihood on a day-to-day -day basis. The Apprentice is great telly, um, and that's what it should be kept as, as great telly for me. OK, we could talk all morning, but we've run out of time, unfortunately. Your book's out now. If people want to get hold of it to inspire their workforce, where do they get hold of it? Um, they can get hold of it through my website, which is um, relsc.com, Amazon, Waterstones, WH Smith. It's out there. The whole your shebang. <laughs> or of course you can get in touch with the Channel and Breakfast Show as well. Thank Pete. you very much, Peter. Yeah, thanks for joining us, sir. Thank you. Cheers. Uh, time now for a quick break. Coming up after which we'll have all the latest news, traffic, travel and weather. Plus Byron and Mike talk rugby league with Salford City coach Steve Sims. We'll see you soon.